Hi everyone, Autumn here today. I want to talk about female narcissists. So I think that female narcissists are very underrepresented in terms of talking about the traits and um, men that have been in relationships with female narcissists and the impact that they have. And they can be just as destructive, if not more, to both men that have been married to them or in relationships to them um, and friends that they are involved in their lives, just as, if not more, destructive and malignant as male narcissists. But, for, but it set, seems to be that because female narcissists, they express differently oftentimes than male narcissists, they're a little bit less represented. So I think that it's really important to talk about them and to give men that have been with them and have had to deal with them um, a fair shot in trying to cope with the abuse, to analyze them and female friends that have been friends with them because this can be really damaging. And I don't think we as females realize the clinical diagnosable um, uh narcissists that have been in our lives and what the impact has been on the abuse that they have put on us. So I'm going to talk about it more from a female perspective and my own personal perspective. Then I'm going to do a couple podcasts and videos on more general terms and talking about how females are in terms of relationships. But I am going to touch on them in relationships. And this first video, um, or sorry, this first audio podcast, um, and like always, I do one audio podcast, and then I do a totally separate one with basically the same information, but in a different way with a video. So I do one, two. Uh, both of them have similar information, but are expressed differently. So you may want to listen to or watch both. Um, this first one, I'm going to go over the the four female narcissists I've had in my life. And the reason why I'm going to use them to exemplify the four main kind of groups or types of female narcissists is that as I was writing this down and thinking about it, I realized, wow, for some reason, I just so happened, the four female narcissists that have been in my life, and I was really close to all of them at one point, tend to represent kind of the four main types of female narcissists that are out there. Now, of course, every individual is different and there's many different quote unquote types of female narcissists, but I think there are four main types that I've personally seen and heard about with male victims of narcissistic abuse um, or that I've met personally. And these four main types are the somantic, and, and it's similar to male narcissists, the somantic female narcissists, which is very grandiose, they're very dramatic, everything's about them, they're very obvious, sexual, they're more histrionic. Then there's the covert narcissist, um, and the covert narcissist tends to be the victim, the poor me, everyone's always out to get them, they're always abused, um, they're, it's, they're less, they're harder to tell that they're narcissists until you really get to know them. Their games are harder to see. At first, you really take pity on them, and you can't really see the games they're playing. Um, then there's the antisocial narcissists. Now, for females, there's a lot less than men. They're, but in terms of the sociopathic or antisocial narcissists, there are women that are antisocial narcissists. And I, unfortunately was uh, in the web of one, and I'll talk about that in the video in a little bit in this one, and they tend to be straight-up con artists. And female sociopathic narcissists, con artists, tend to be pretty darn good at it because people don't expect it from women as much. They tend to be able to exploit their sexuality to and their innocence and uh, their femininity to help them even with other straight females. And then there is the more, now this kind of goes with the histrionic, borderline covert narcissist, more borderline, where it's very emotional, again, a victim. And then the covert and the borderline narcissist tend to overlap. But the difference is that the borderline narcissist tends to have a lot of trauma and abuse in their past. They are all about being abandoned. 
They are all about their victimization. They are very much a you know little mouse almost I always call them they're the the the, the girl you just want to you know they try to make men like want to put them in their arms where the covert tends to still be a normal looking woman a lot of times you know that mix between dependent and independent you know educated where the the the, the borderline narcissist I've found tends to be uneducated often tends to be much more needy and obviously needy so those four main general, again, I'm generalizing, there are many other types, but these four main female types of narcissists that I've found to be, I've just so happened to have these four in my life. So I'm going to talk about the four I've had. So let's start with the somantic, uh, kind of the traditional somantic narcissist. The girl I was friends with for a couple of years, I was pretty close to, um, I, you know what, I'm just going to use their first name only. No one really knows me anyway. Um, and look, I don't have a relationship with any of these people anymore. So um, I don't really feel like I need to apologize because I'm not putting them down for any of this. I'm Because I feel as though this is all factually based. I'm not, I will try to inject as little bit of assumption or biased opinion or perce perception, perspective, sorry, into it as I can. And I'll try to stick with facts. So the semantic narcissist that I was friends with, her name was Nat. And Nat was, again, and, and this is a description of semantic, very much about her beauty and how hot she was. Very fake. Fake tits, fake eyebrows, fake eyelashes. Always trying to exploit her sexuality, but in this way of being, you know, um, going out and always wanting attention from men, exploiting it underhandedly. So even though she was very, I don't like to use these words, but this is the only word I could really use to describe her. She was very slutty in a very in-your-face way, but she liked to try and present it as though she was still classy. So she was this free woman who was able to be, you know, like a man. And she was very proud of this. She exploited her sexuality, um, yet she still tried to be sexual like a man. And she was very proud of it and even kind of acted like that and said it. Um, she was always, a, she could never be alone. And this was always the, the interesting dichotomy, and I found this with a lot of semantic female narcissists, that while they are very in your face about their beauty and their wonderfulness, and their, it's all about them, and they're so great, and they're so smart, and they're so successful, and, they're, and, and in this regard, they act as though they're, they can be alone, that they're so independent, and they will even say how independent they are. They will criticize other women for needing men and... You know, I remember she would uh, lecture me and a couple of my friends um, how pathetic we were that we needed, that we wanted to be married. That's so pathetic. And yet she herself could not be alone. And yet she would never acknowledge this. She played it off in her fake full self as though she was this, this independent woman. In reality, she literally could not be alone. So the semantic female narcissist, just like Nat was, would line up men uh, secretly, and even her female friends usually didn't know about it, well, before she ended previous relationships. She was in a long-term relationship with a man for years and years and years, and she had been working to set up another relationship for over a year before she ended it with a long-term, like, six, seven-year boyfriend who she was very, very, quote-unquote, serious with, a man who was a great man. And that's the thing. that She always had to find men that were sweet, kind-hearted, generous men who, would, who had a very, very patient, forgiving, loving, kind, a little bit almost uh, on the feminine side in good ways, in kind, loving, caring ways. Um, and it always broke my heart to see what type of men she would end up with because she treated them ultimately horribly. But, this is the big but, like male narcissists, she loved bombs at first, 
And whenever she could feel them not giving her what she wanted, which always had to do with narcissistic supply and money, giving her that lifestyle that she wanted, the ring, the fur coat, the house, the status. Whenever she could feel it slipping away or they would start to question it, she would start love bombing again. So they love bomb and it's over the top. It's like, and it's always you know, cuddling and being super sexual and uh, affectionate when normal people wouldn't be that way. Let's say, for example, when we're at a restaurant as a group of friends in an environment where everyone else might be holding hands at most, the somantic female narcissist is going to be rubbing her husband or boyfriend's thigh is going to be all over him to show him how much she, you know, because it's all a show. Um, the somantic female narcissist, again, is going to be lining up a man before she breaks. And she'll, she'll have no shame about it. She would go out, now being in a serious, like, five, six-year relationship with a great man who is sweet, loyal, honest, kind, everything, would just, without any shame, go out and make out with guys at bars and have no qualms, and literally act as though she did not do it. So when us as friends, which I would, I did not have, I was not okay with it, and this was the, this is why we weren't friends at a certain point. Um, part of the reason, when I wasn't having it anymore, and of course she, again, is a, a somantic female narcissist, is a type of person who, if a female friend starts to question her behavior, if they, she starts to give it back to her, if she doesn't kiss her ass, she will hate her for no reason. And she will have everything bad to say. One thing that Nat would do is always sit around with whomever she was friends with. And she would be friends with people who, again, would kiss her ass, would make her feel like they could be her puppet. She could not keep long-term friends. So with a with a somantic female narcissist, you're going to see women that can't keep long-term friends. They're, they're usually not going to have childhood friends. They're definitely not going to keep long-term female friends. You're going to see that they're going to talk shit, basically, about every friend that they have. But when you see them in person, when, you, when you, she is around them in person, you're going to see her be so overly sweet and great. So I mean this literally. The first time that I saw this in action, we were friends, good, close friends for maybe a year. And my friend, Sarah, and I had become friends with her. We had known her uh, peripherally in a group of friends for a few years, but we were only friends with good friends with her for about a year. This was the first time we saw this in action. And there was this girl, I think her name was like Caitlin. And uh, she was telling me us, Oh, Caitlin's going to meet us out. And she would talk like this, talk like this all the time. And um, I just can't stand her. She's just so annoying. And she went on and on. And Sarah and I were like, this is so bizarre. And I'm not even kidding. Caitlin was walking up behind her. And as Nat was going, she is so annoying. I just can't fucking stand her. She turns around, and in mid-sentence, just her whole demeanor changes. Oh, my God, it's so good to see you. I love you. And it's just over the top. Just And, and from that point on, this is the beginning of the end. And at a certain point, I only hung out with her because I had friends that hung out with her. And at a certain point, I refused to be around her because you will see with these female somantic narcissists that they literally, they literally will just talk smack about people, uh, everyone, and then be completely opposite in the front of their face. So they're completely fickle and fake. Now I'm going to stop there about the female semantic narcissist. I want to go in great detail. I have, an, I have an incredible amount of information. Look for my video and my audio podcast on specifically the female semantic narcissist if you want to learn more. And I'm going to also talk specifically about what they are like in relationships. So if you are questioning whether or not you're in a relationship with a female somantic narcissist or if you're recovering from abuse from a female somantic narcissist and you're trying to learn more so that you can recover excuse me look for that video and that audio podcast okay so the second one is the sociopathic narcissist female sociopathic narcissist 
or the female antisocial narcissist. This is the female that is a narcissist and has antisocial personality disorder or antisocial personality disorder traits. The sociopathic narcissist that was in my life is a textbook female antisocial personality disordered narcissistic personality disordered female. Her name was Ivana. She came from from she came from um Eastern Europe. She was a very talented pianist. She was a straight up con artist. A straight up con artist. She was overweight, but she was pretty and she was incredibly talented and she exploited her innocence, her naivety that she tried to play off and I fell for it hook line and sinker. I took her under my wing. I gave her a job in my business, at my business, which was a music school, my first business that was fairly successful. I introduced her to people. She, I'm going to go more into her and the very specific trait of this type of female narcissist in, again, my video and audio podcast. I'm going to entitle the sociopathic nar- female narcissist. So let me just real quick go into the traits of her. They lie, 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 lie. Everything is a lie. And often they're not even that good at it. But because everything is a lie, and you'll start to to see the little lies pop up, but because everything's a lie, there is virtually no real truth. And you could never really discern, and they will confuse you so much that... Once you get hooked into them and once they manipulate you where they convince you that they're, they mean well and you're, you now have empathy and sympathy for them and you're trying to help them because it's always about helping them. Poor them. They need help. You're going to save them, right? On some level, there's this, they always exploit something. And it's not though the same as the borderline or the, what I call the covert or histrionic Narcissist, female narcissist. It's not. The con artist, sociopathic narcissist, female narcissist, uses something that they have that's alluring on a different level. It's going to be a talent. It's going to be that they supposedly have this money, this inheritance, that they have a house that they need help with to blah, blah, blah. They have a parent dying of cancer. They have, you know, and it's always something really big and it's always that you are going to save them. And it's, they will con not just men, they will also con women. And I learned this firsthand and I'm going to go into more detail about them in another video and the other podcasts, like I mentioned. Okay. The third is again, the covert female narcissist and much like the male female or male covert narcissist. They are the hardest to spot. Oftentimes, you don't know that you're in a relationship with one until like the relationship's ending or has ended. The abuse is so covert and so secretive and so hidden that until your self-esteem is being ruined and torn apart, you don't even know what's going on. They're that common type of narcissist, just like the male covert narcissist that will do the things like gaslighting a lot. They will always turn it around so that they are the victim. They will make you feel bad and make you question your own sense of reality. But what they do and what they say are two different things. So what they say, they'll be very, they're not like the somantic, but they say, they'll say they love you, but they'll even kind of pepper in sometimes really sweet kind things that they do and um they will do but then what they actually their behaviors are completely different 